My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me and that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I ask your pardon for my sins, for the grace to make this time of prayer fruitful, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before the Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph. Then Joseph bought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the linen cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. He then rolled the stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Joseph saw where the body was laid. Lord Jesus, this is where we left you yesterday on Good Friday. After the trying vigil of Holy Thursday, and after the extreme cruelty of Good Friday, your agony, suffering, and death on the cross, the last thing that is done to you after your death is this act of care, of charity, that you have a place to lie, that you have a place to rest. And Joseph of Arimathea is described here as someone who is waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God. And on this day, when Jesus lies silently in the tomb, the whole church waits expectantly the resurrection. It's a day of silence in which our silence mirrors, parallels the silence of Jesus himself, resting in death in the tomb. And it's a day of waiting, a joyful hopeful, even though still sad, waiting for the Lord, waiting for his resurrection. And waiting is tied to hope. In Latin, the word for hope is expecto, expectare. It's one of the words for hope. Hope in the Lord, expecto dominum. And that's also the case in, in Hebrew, the Hebrew words for hope have this tie to waiting, waiting patiently for God, but waiting with the sense of expecting him, expecting him to come, expecting his deliverance. Mary today is waiting for the resurrection. The church today is waiting for the resurrection. And Jesus himself, Jesus who prayed the Psalms throughout his life, Jesus' prayer many times was the prayer precisely of the Psalms. Well, we can imagine Jesus' soul is separated from his body in these hours, these days between Good Friday and Easter Sunday. We can imagine Jesus still praying, praying the Psalms, Psalms of hopeful expectation. Psalm 40 comes to mind. I waited patiently for the Lord, he inclined to me and heard my cry. He drew me up from the desolate pit, out of the miry bog, and set my feet upon a rock, making my steps secure. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. A great image of our Lord waiting in his death patiently for the resurrection. And that resurrection will be this great sign to the people and a great joyful praise of God. He put a new song in my mouth, a song of praise to our God. Many will see and fear and put their trust in the Lord. And waiting is difficult when we want something to come. We kind of want it right now. <laughs> if something is good, well, then we say, well, why wait? And yet waiting is important. It's a necessary aspect of our faith life when we go through trials. It's a necessary aspect of 
the history of salvation, the history of the church now, we wait with joyful hope the coming of our Savior Jesus Christ. Lord, help us today to wait with you, to wait with Mary, to consider that this time of waiting really drives home the point of your death, Lord. That you didn't just pretend to die on the cross. You really died and you stayed in that tomb for at least a part of three days. Good Friday evening and night, Holy Saturday, and then into the vigil of Easter Sunday. You were dead for a while. And that time of death for us is a time of hopeful expectation, even though it's still tinged with the sadness of seeing you die yesterday. Tom Petty, a American rock star, had a hit in the 1980s, precisely called The Waiting. And the chorus went like this. The waiting is the hardest part. Every day you see one more card. You take it on faith. You take it to the heart. The waiting is the hardest part. And I don't know if the waiting is the hardest part of the Paschal Triduum. The hardest part was probably yesterday to see you, Lord, suffering so much and to realize that it was our doing, that our sins caused the passion, that you suffer that way for me. That was probably the hardest part and the most rewarding part at the same time. Nevertheless, the waiting is a hard part. We have to take it on faith. We only see one card at a time. We have to live a hopeful, faith-filled expectation of God's deliverance. And as Jesus lived this in his death, awaiting the resurrection, and as Mary lived that as co-redemptrix, so too in the trials in our life, in the difficult points in our life, we have to have this joyful, hopeful expectation. Patience inures us against difficult trials that last, that perjure. And we need it. It's, it's a necessary virtue. Jesus, you yourself say, by your patience, you will win your souls. By our patience, we will win our souls. Trials that last a while are testing of our faith and therefore an opportunity to grow in faith. An opportunity, Lord, to be faithful to you, to use our faith, our conviction, of your goodness, our conviction of your plan, our conviction that when you send us things that are difficult, they're actually good for us, they're good for our souls. Those trials that perdure, those trials that we would rather have to be over, they are a chance for us to be faithful precisely by leaning on our faith, leaning on the goodness of God, leaning on the providence of God. And so there's a connection between Faith, right? Having faith, uh, the conviction that Jesus loves us, that God is our Father, that God is providential, and being faithful, right? Not giving up, not betraying our Lord in times of difficulty, not turning to some sinful distraction, or not turning in on ourselves when there's some trial that tests our patience. To be faithful to what we know to be true, to be faithful to the faith, the content of the faith, God's love for us, our salvation. And isn't this what Mary must have been doing today? Shocked, sad, in a certain sense, emotionally overwhelmed by the experience of seeing her son die, by consenting to it, right? Trying to support him in it, to be there f for him. And yet, nevertheless, today, she exercises faithfulness through her faith. She believes in Jesus' promise that he will rise again. He assured her of that. He assured all of his disciples of that. And she believes it. And that faith helps her to be faithful today, not to despair, not to give in to self-pity or sadness. Lord Jesus, we ask you for that grace, the grace of Mary on Holy Saturday faithful, expectant waiting, faithful, joyful hope. And give it to us, Lord, especially in times in our life when there's some trial that stays with us, or some problem that doesn't resolve itself quickly. Give us that 
patient hope so that we can live through it, leaning on our faith, on the promise of new life, a promise of your salvation and your resurrection. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations which you have communicated to me in this meditation. I ask your help to put them into effect, my Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my guardian angel, intercede for me.